Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome to 30 Minute Websites, the show where I build an entire online store in 30 minutes, and each video is dedicated to a different product. And so today we're going to be building an online store all about selling protein online. So whether you uh, private label protein, you make protein, uh, you're retailing other people's protein, drop shipping protein. This is going to be perfect for you. So we're going to be selling protein online as well as things like create like a little bit of apparel, uh, so like clothes um, and like shakers and stuff like that. Uh, anything else that someone who would buy protein online might also want and uh, try and kind of be like this one-stop shop for anybody who wants uh, supplements. And then you can, this can also apply for anything, any other kind of health and fitness supplement as well. Um, so how it works, I've got 30 minutes and so I've got my e.gg timer. This is going to measure down the 30 minutes as we go. Uh, I've got a fresh installation of WordPress. Uh, so WordPress is a free open source content management system, powers most of the internet. Uh, so what it means is basically it lets you build websites without having to to do any coding at all. Um, you will need a host. So most hosts will be able to help you install WordPress really simply if you have any trouble at all. Just contact the support team and most of them are always really friendly and can help you install WordPress really easily. Um, so you've got w WordPress. Uh, WordPress by itself um, doesn't give you the ability to create an online store. So WordPress itself is very basic and you add plugins to increase its functionality. So the plugin we'll be using today is called WooCommerce, also owned by the same company, Automatic. Um, and so it's free to use and lets us build an online store really simply and really quickly. Uh, we're gonna be using a WordPress theme. So WordPress have different themes that allow you to structure the appearance. So we'll be using a free theme called Storefront. Uh, Storefront is made by WooCommerce to work specifically for WooCommerce. Um, so it works perfectly. Uh, so we'll, those will, that's what we'll be using. They're all free. The only thing you'd need, if you wanted to recreate this, the only thing you need to pay for is the host. Uh, we've got a bunch of free images uh, that I'll be using. So free, for all your free images. So I've got a nice big banner image uh, that will go on the home page. So if you wanted to follow along, you just need a big banner image. Uh, I need product category images, um, product images, and a logo. So something on a transparent background would be perfect. Uh, the way that I'm doing shipping for this one is I'll charge for um, one shipping fee for flat rate. Um, I'll probably do local pickup for Brisbane, uh, for people in the Brisbane area, and it's only going to be for people in Brisbane. And I'll probably offer free shipping to those who spend over a certain amount of money, try and get the average cart value higher, and then... Um, and offer a, a free shipping as an incentive for people who spend more at my store, increasing profits. Um, so what I would do with this one personally is I would pair this with something like ClickFunnels because what you'll find is that typically it's going to be hard to sell someone like a one kilo tub of protein straight off the bat who's never tried it, never experienced your product, don't know if they're going to like it. So what I would do is pair this with something like ClickFunnels where you build out a sales funnel for starting something like a sample product so they can try it. They can, they can give it a try and then you can upsell them uh, after they purchase that sample pack, trying to increase the average cart value. Because what you'll find with ClickFunnels sales funnels compared to WooCommerce stores that we're going to build today, typically get a higher conversion rate, uh, higher average cart value, but they don't get the ability to add various products to the cart and customize their own checkout experience. This is why we pair both ClickFunnels and WooCommerce together to create the ultimate sales machine for our e-commerce business. Um, so yeah, that's what I would do. And then you could sell, you could ship, when you ship the uh, sample product, uh, you could include like a little coupon for free shipping when they buy it from this, from your store to try and bring people back onto your WooCommerce site. You can then retarget them with Facebook ads. You can then, um, you can retarget them with your mailing list. So um, promote different offers on your online store. So that's what I would do with this one personally. So whether you private label it or you retail other store, others, um, this, the, all that whole system would work perfectly for all of this. Uh, if you would like me to build an online store, just like the one that I'm about to build now for free for you, for your business, uh, go check out okryan.blog slash go. Link should be in the description. I have an offer where if you sign up to ClickFunnels through my link, uh, I offer I give you free WordPress hosting. So the hosting that I'm about to uh, use the build of this site with, you get free hosting. Uh, you get a free online store that I will design for you and um, and help you put together your sales funnel. So you just go to okryan.blog slash go because my goal is to make e-commerce simple. So I try and bundle different e-commerce services that you would normally have to pay for separately, help you save money to reinvest back into your business in marketing and product creation. So we're about ready to go. We've got our 30 minutes. We've got our website. We've got all our images ready to go. So the 30 minutes starting. 
Now, so the first thing we're going to do is log into the back end of our WordPress site. Um, so we head in and we have to use the logins created when we first installed WordPress onto our hosting platform. Uh, so it's going to take us to the back end of our WordPress website. Um, and then the first thing I always do is I like to change the permalink structure because WordPress doesn't give us the best version of permalinks or from the get-go. So we go setting, oh, come on. All right, so it's just loading settings and then permalinks. So we're going to change the permalink structure from custom name to post name. So permalinks are the individual URLs for each individual page. Um, and so we're just changing it from custom structure to post name. Pretty much everybody does that. Next thing I'm going to do is bulk upload all of my images because I only have 30 minutes. So normally when I work with clients, I'll just upload images as I go. Um, but because I've got 30 minutes, I'm trying to rush and get everything done in one go. I'm going to go through and bulk upload all my images so they can just get started working while I install two plugins. So the first plugin I'm going to install is called Homepage Control. So the storefront theme that we'll be using on our site does have some limitations. So we're going to install Homepage Control. Just going to give us a little bit more say um, on the widgets that are available on our homepage. Um, so I'm going to go homepage, control, install, and then activate. So it's a free uh, free plugin, free to use. Um, that's just going to give us a bit more say as to what widgets, to, uh, what shop widgets are shown on our homepage. Perfect. So now we're going to add in a second plugin called WooCommerce. So that WooCommerce was that one, the plugin that gives our WordPress website um, e-commerce functionality to it, essentially. So we're gonna install. And then activate. And once we activate, it takes a little while to install and activate because it is quite a large plugin. It's just, and then we're going to go through. It's going to take us a bit of a startup wizard um, that's going to we're going to put input, input information such as um, uh, business address, uh, the payment process we're going to be using. So you'll need to have a payment processor for your online store. So whether you choose like PayPal, Stripe, Amazon Pay, Square, Authorize, and there's also a bunch of country specific payment processes. There's tons of avail options available. Um, so I would go from personally when choosing a payment processor, most of them charge roughly the same fees. They're going to be very similar at least. Um, so just put in the business address here. So most of the, most of the business, uh, the payment processing fees for the, uh, for these companies are generally similar or if not the same, um, this typically standard of 2.9%, um, plus, uh, 2.9% plus like 30 cents per transaction. So they're roughly going to be the same. So I would go based off features and benefits of the payment processor. So for this one, I'm just going to be using PayPal because PayPal is probably the easiest to set up. You're just going to tick the box, add in your, you make sure that's your payment, PayPal email. Um, you might see different payment processes because mine's in Australia. If you put yours in America, you'll see a bunch of different ones. If you say it's in the UK, you'll see different, more country specific payment processes. But um, yeah, most of them are going to be very similar. I turn off shipping because I like to get into more detailed rules on my shipping. So that's going to be more of a broad stroke uh, shipping price, but I like to get into the nitty gritty. So, how, uh, so I'm going to untick everything but storefront. So this is how we install the storefront theme. Um, so you're just going to make sure that our box is, un is, box is checked, and that's going to upload the storefront theme to your website. So the next thing it's going to ask us if we want to install Jetpack. Me personally, I don't. I found that every time I've used Jetpack, it's just slowed down the page loading speed of my website, and there's a lot of research to show that, the, uh, that there's a significant correlation between page load speed and conversion rate. Uh, so you want to make sure you've got a nice fast loading website. All right. All my images have been uploaded. I'm going to go plug in installed. So when you install WordPress on your hosting host for the first time, typically what you'll find is that your host will install a bunch of plugins. They often get back end deals to make sure that they've got the best hosting prices. Um, and WooCommerce will also install a bunch of plugins onto your site. So we're going to go through and take off all of these plugins because um, yeah, just load on your website. So I'm going to, so to get rid of a plugin, you got to deactivate it and then delete it. So that's going to start working on that. My website, my online store is just going to be selling to Australia. So I'm selling to specific countries, Australia. So what that does is it removes other countries available on the checkout page. So you can't choose whatever country to, um, to ship to. All right, delete, deactivated. Now just delete everything but the two we uploaded. 
delete. All right, go. Okay, so that's going to start deleting all of those plugins. So now we're going to set up the shipping rules. So uh, basically, the ba the basic version of WordPress, if so, WooCommerce, if uh, it doesn't include weight-based shipping, if you do want weight-based shipping, you'll have to install a plug. You have to go buy a plugin called Table Rate Shipping. I think it's called from WooCommerce. Um, otherwise, we've basically got two. Um, Protein. So basically, to do it, we need to create shipping classes that represent the main weight categories of the products we sell. So I'm going to create one for protein, one for clothing, and you can create it for like different weights as well. Uh, and then one for what was my other uh, gear? I'll just call it. So that's going to be for my protein shaker. So that's going to be quite a cheap one. All right. So we created um, different uh, shipping classes for our products. So we're going to go to shipping zones. So I'm going to add the shipping zone. So we're going to create different regions. So I'm going to charge a little bit less for, for when I ship within Brisbane because it's cheaper for me to ship within Brisbane, the Brisbane region. So Queensland, Australia, limit to zip code. So you can't limit it just to Brisbane. There's only a Queensland option. So we have to limit it to specific po the specific postcodes of Brisbane. So when someone goes to the checkout page, and says their state is Queensland, and they put a postcode between this postcode range, is going to give them the shipping uh, rules that I set here. So flat rate, I'm going to add a flat rate, I'm going to add a local pickup and a free shipping. A flat rate, free shipping, and local pickup. So for this, I'm going to charge, what should I charge for? I'll just start off with the protein. Let's say we charge uh, $9, uh, let's say $5 a tub plus, uh, let's say $3 for each additional tub of protein we sell because we can bundle it and save on the shipping rules. So is it $5 plus three, did I say? Yeah, $5 plus three, two plus brackets, three times square bracket QTY, close square bracket, close bracket. So uh, three times the amount of protein tubs in the shopping cart, plus two, essentially. I'm going to copy that, paste. So gear, because that's going to be a lot lighter, I'm going to charge $3 plus $2. Might do the same for clothing because it's cheap to ship. And I, can, I prefer to try and eat as much of the shipping cost into my profits because... Basically, because you're running an online store, you've got significantly lower overheads than a traditional bricks and mortar store, so you can afford to kind of eat some of the cost of shipping. Um, minimum order amount, minimum order amount, and coupon or coupon code of let's say sixty bucks. It's typically a little bit more expensive for protein anyway. Alrighty. Shipping zones. All right, now we're going to get add one for the rest of Australia. Australia. All righty, and add shipping method. So we're going to add a flat rate and a, a free shipping. So my free shipping, I'll probably do the same amount just to try and keep one set rule so I can just have it promote on my website to say free shipping over 60 bucks for everybody. And then flat rate, I might just increase a little bit. Um, protein, so I might go $7 plus three gear, charge that. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, most expensive, okay, save changes. All right, so we've set up the shipping. Now we can set up, this should be all deleted. Perfect. Now we can set up our product categories. So products, categories. So we've set up our shipping rules. We've set up, uh, we've installed all the, uh, the, uh, the images we're gonna be using. So I just bulk uploaded all of those. So first one's gonna be called protein, add image. So I'm gonna add, this picture of this guy drinking a protein shake. Um, and I'm going to add, uh, what was it? Uh, 
clo oh, clothing that one and then the next one was going to be like gear like equipment and you can add different products and stuff like that to this as well not just limited to protein shakers because I, I just have 30 minutes so i'm not going to make this the most comprehensive full store um but at least get enough products in there to, so you can have an understanding of how it's going to look gear yeah, perfect i want to reorder this so how it's displayed on my home page perfect all right so we've created our shipping rules, uploaded our media, created our product categories. Now we're ready to start adding some products in. So I'm going to copy this, add new. So I'm just going to upload a bunch of pages that can start loading so I don't have to wait for a new page every time it loads. So first thing we're going to start uploading, uh, so we've got three types of protein. We've got a chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla, uh, nice and basic. So we're going to go with the chocolate protein and i think i got my super convincing sales copy which of course you would just replace with your own but my super convincing sales copy that convinces everybody to purchase when they visit it now i get that this is good this is the driest part of um the the, the 30 minutes is uploading the products because i they are, you know i want to make sure that there's enough that you can see kind of how to do things uh, and how the store will look so i get that this is going to be a little bit dry from here on all right, so we're gonna, uh, I'm big on inventory management. Um, it's gonna go a long way to make sure that you don't overorder, you don't have too much more stock than you need, so you make sure you've got more revenue in the bank rather than held in, uh, in inventory to reinvest where necessary. So what I like to do is I would recommend um, your stock, so have whatever your stock quantity is, what, 45, for instance, um, and then your low stock threshold. So what I would recommend is figure out how much on average you sell per week, um, how long it takes for it to arrive. So maybe, you know, if it doesn't take long to arrive, you don't need to wait as long. Let's say it takes a week for it to arrive. You sell roughly um, 20 tubs of protein a week. It takes a week to arrive. Uh, you need to make sure that your low stock uh, threshold is at least 20, but I would give yourself a little bit of a buffer of maybe 25. So then when what this is going to do when you hit 25 tubs of protein left, you're going to get a notification email saying um, you've hit your low stock threshold. So that's going to give you plenty of time to reorder more protein because it might take a week to arrive and you sell on average 20 a week. But of course, this can be also very seasonal. Um, you know, take the take the new year. Um, you don't want to make you want to make sure that uh, that it does take in consideration your seasonality of the fitness industry. Okay, publish. All right, so we've done the chocolate. Um, strawberry protein. The hardest thing you're going to do is if you also run a bricks and mortar store is managing your inventory because you don't want to oversell something online. Let's say you've got 20 tons of protein. You put 20, but you've also, you've got 20 in your store. You sell 15 in your store, 15 online, you know, and you got to wait week to wait. So I would either, what I would do is try and segment, um, your inventory as much as possible. Uh, let's see, I sell a little bit less of this. I don't need as much 20, um, try and segment your, your online store, um, inventory and your business inventory or use a payment processor such as square, which can sync up. If you have your inventory held in one place, it can sync the inventory between your online store and your physical bricks and mortar store. So you go, when you want to set the shipping rate. So what I'm doing is when I go shipping rates, shipping class, and I choose protein that tells WooCommerce, when someone checks out, to assign the shipping rate that I set for the protein category and then publish. And then we're going to go to vanilla protein. Do the same thing. Insert our super convincing sales copy. Super convincing sales copy. Oh, wait, did I change did a price for all of these? I don't think I did. Strawberry protein price, say 40 bucks. Workers wear a really discount protein place but you can charge whatever you'd like chocolate protein yeah i didn't charge a price 40 bucks that'll do perfect Alrighty. inventory set at say i've got 50 of these say what's this vanilla vanilla is probably the that doesn't sell nearly as much i sell a lot less of those per week so i don't need to order until i get to 15 but yeah making sure that you don't have 
keep you know, one of the keys to retail is keeping as little uh, li- as little cash um, revenue tied up in inventory as possible. So you really want to go what they, well, what a lot of people call truck to truck. So try and keeping um, yeah, so you're not tying as much revenue up in inventory that's not necessary. Perfect vanilla. All righty, so we've created our protein um, containers. So now we can start uploading some more. So I'm going to call this the Protein by Ryan shirt. This is going to be under clothing, super convincing sales copy, super convincing sales copy. And if you'd like me to build an online store just like the one I am building now, uh, head to okryan.blog slash go. And there's more information about how you can get me to design you a online store for free. So what we're going to do is create custom attributes. So custom attributes, a variable product basically lets us create like the different um, drop downs. So you can choose small, medium, or large t-shirt. So we're going to go, we're going to create the attributes first. So size. So this is creating um, the sizing attributes. So medium and large. So we create the attributes first. That's just creating the, the sizes. But now we have to create, add the characteristics to um, the attributes. Um, yeah. So we create, go to variations, create variations from all attributes, and click go. And that's going to bring in the sizing over to this table. All right, small. Um, I'm not going to manage the stock on this because I can always go, let's say we get this printed at a t-shirt store. I can always get more printed and have them ship within 24 hours. So I'm going to charge 50 bucks for the shirt. Seeing as parent, so the parent category is the clothing. <clears throat> say 50 bucks. And then the large. 50 bucks. Perfect. Save changes. Actually, what I also wanted to do, and I forgot to do, is I wanted to create uh, my protein tubs as featured products. Uh, featured product, okay, update. And I know my protein tubs may not look great. I acknowledge fully that I'm not a graphic designer. I'm terrible at it. I'm more the web design side of things. Edit, and then featured product. Okay, so that's just going to create these as featured products because there's a widget on the homepage that we can display our featured product on the homepage. And so I want to be able to yeah, set which products I display it on the homepage. Let's create the t-shirt as a featured product too. All right. So we've created the shirt. Um, protein shaker. Super convincing sales copy that convinces everybody to purchase. I'm going to charge 10 bucks for this, but I'm going to put it on special for eight. Manage stock, I'll leave that. The shipping class, gear, product image is the protein shaker. Cool. All right. Protein. Oh no, gear. And then publish. All right, so we've created our products. So now we're now we're ready to start putting things together. So we're going to go in and we're going to create two pages. We're going to create a, a home page and a blog page. So we're going to go pages, add new, add new. So we're creating two pages, a home page and a blog page. If they'll load, I have found that the pages can take a little while to load up. Um, but yeah, they'll just load up. And we're going to create pages. So the way that the storefront theme works is that it actually displays the page title on the page on the page itself. So even though we're creating a home page, we don't want to call the page title homepage. So a lot of other themes, you can name it whatever you want, and you can change it on the actual homepage itself. You can't without custom coding with storefront. So we're going to call this one. This is going to be the home name, uh, protein, oh, protein by Ryan, grab a sample pack of our protein today. And then I'm going to create a button. 
that links to so we're, we're basically we'd link this button to our sales funnel that um, the click funnel sales funnel we talked about earlier okay ryan dot blog slash go so just put in the url of your sales funnel and then enter sample pack perfect then publish Oh wait, I forgot to do two things. So once you've, so you've got to create the text, but now we've got to do two things. We've got to set a featured image. So the featured image is going to be the banner image that we talked about, a nice big banner image. So that'll be on the homepage. Basically how Storefront works is everything that, everything we write here is held within the banner image. So it kind of works as a big banner image and then it adds, so then if we go, I want it to be a homepage. So go page attributes homepage that adds a bunch of shop widgets underneath. So publish that and then the next one we're going to create is a blog page so we can create blog articles and then publish perfect all right so we've created our products created our pages created our shipping rules product categories basically created all the elements now we're ready to put everything all together so we're going to go appearance and then customize let's just clean up some of these tabs Okay, so now we've cr so we've created our home page and our blog page. Now we need to tell WordPress that those are those specific pages. So WordPress is not going to just know that that is the home page. So we're going to go to customize and then click home page settings, static page, home page, protein. So we need to sign the pages we just created for their respective roles and then click publish. And then just refresh that because it doesn't straight up reload it. Perfect. So the site is coming along quite nicely. So a lot of it is like 90% of the way done. Okay. So we have a site identity. You're going to uh, uh, learn where well, this is where we put the logo that we created. So I've got a white text. I know you won't see it right now. I completely understand. But what I want to do is create this, make this dark. So I'm going to go header, background color. I'm going to create like a dark, dark gray. And then just change the link text colors and the link colors to white. Maybe a little less dark than that. I like it. Then we need to go typography, hero heading color white, hero text color white. And that's just going to change these colors. Go link accent deep red perfect it's coming along quite nicely button I want my call to action to be red but like a nice dark ish red text color white mm, maybe a bit a bit deeper perfect all right background I like it to just be a little bit off white just a slight gray slightness of grayness to the background all right buttons layout product pages okay so we've now we can create the menus basically the menus if you just leave it by itself will just be a random hodgepodge of all the pages that you've created so now we need to create menus and assign them the roles of these places so the three places available on storefront you've got primary which is just here the main one you have secondary which is just going to be to the left of the search bar and then handheld, which is your uh, mobile. So we need to give the name. So like call it primary. This is sign. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's just for your own reference in the future. I'm going to add items. So I'm going to go homepage button. I want to call blog button, my account, shop. And what I'm also going to do is add some product categories, protein, clothing, and gear. So if you bring the uh, if you just slide these um, tabs just to the side to the side it creates them as a drop down let's put my account over here so it makes them a drop down as you can see there it makes that nice little drop down and then create new menu we're going to call it secondary this is just for your own reference it's not visible anywhere secondary and then add items so now i'm going to add custom links so what I would do is I would paste my Facebook URL. So facebook.com slash 
blah, blah, blah. Facebook. Then put my Instagram, Instagram.com slash blah, blah, blah. My Instagram. And so on and so forth. You kind of get the idea. And then I'm going to add my handheld menu and held, which is going to be add items, um, pages. So home, blog, my account, shop. Perfect. Publish. Now we can do the widgets. So widgets are like, so if we go to the shop here. So widgets are these little things down the sidebar. You can also have some widgets in the bottom bar. Um, essentially, WordPress was originally designed to be a blogging content creation platform. Um, so all the widgets that you're going to be automatically assigned with when you build your, your WordPress website are going to be more blogging specific, which is fine. But I want to change them and add... Um, I want to add online store specific ones. So I'm going to add a filter by price. So it's going to add a price filter so I can change the price. I can add product categories, but I want to hide the empties because I don't want the uncategorized one in there. Say we add, what else? We could add, um, Filter by product rating, for instance. You could add a search bar, product search, bring that to the top, maybe. Yeah. So you, yeah, you're just going to basically like you can assign different uh, widgets there. What else we got? All right. So it's going to publish that, and then we're going to go to the home page and just re rejumble some of the widgets that we have. So go home. Now we're doing three minutes remaining. All righty. So when you assign a uh, storefront these are all the widgets that you have available and there's just a ton of them um if you don't have a store with like tons and tons and tons and tons of products you'll find out a lot of these are repeated so that's why we add the plugin called homepage control and we can deactivate some of these so i'm gonna go take off that one let's see the other featured so we'll just leave the featured I like a nice clean homepage so we recommend um, and of course you would just have you have your nicer images these are just mock-ups that I've just created for an example but they'll do alrighty so <clears throat> what do we got we got two minutes remaining okay another thing I like to do is because storefront gives you basically three page templates so there's three ways of structuring the page so you've got your home page which is just like well, let me see in a second if it load homepage, which we assign to the homepage, which has your basic content that we create. Um, and then it has all the shop widgets underneath. Um, but you've also got default and full width. So default. So that's how this homepage looks, uh, default. <clears throat> then you have your default page template, which has your content and then a sidebar, but then you can also choose full width. Now I recommend using your full width page template, for stuff like your account and your shopping cart and your um, checkout page. So as you can see here, you've got your My Account page and you've got a sidebar. Uh, same with your shopping cart, you've also got a sidebar. What I would recommend is changing that to um, full width because when someone's on the My Account tab or someone's going through the checkout process, I don't want them to be distracted by stuff in the sidebar. I want them just to be focusing purely on that one thing so we're going to go full width and then update full width and then update so basically i want to get rid of the sidebar when they're going through the checkout process because i want them to be 100 percent focused on going through the checkout i do the same for the um the checkout page this is the shopping cart page and as you can see boom sidebar has gone and then the last thing you got to do before to, for your store so yeah as you see sidebar has gone and it just means that they can focus 100 percent on the um, on the actual checkout process. And the last thing you got to, you'd have to do, and hopefully my internet is fast enough to do this in 20 seconds, your settings, um, payments, is you would check, uh, you would tick this over to enable, 
and then just click save changes. I'm going to turn this off because I don't want a live site. And that would make sure that your website is ready to accept, stop setting up payments. And we are done. Built an online store. Being, it's like, it's like to sell uh, protein supplements online within 30 minutes. So, if, and um, just another note on the PayPal payment processor. Um, you've also got live API details. So what that lets you do is basically process refunds from your online store. Otherwise, if you wanted to refund someone, you'd have to go to your payment processor. So if it's PayPal, you'd have to go to your PayPal account and process a refund from there. But if you get your PayPal e API details, put it into here. And if someone wants a refund, you can process your refund via your online store and um yeah so so you can yeah you can process the payments um for your customers right from your online store so let us check out let's get rid of these pages and we'll check out our online store so got a nice big banner image we've got our button that takes someone that takes people directs them to our sales funnel that's what our most of my marketing as well would be designed to do would be pushing people to the front end offer so if you're targeting cold traffic with your Facebook ads, or most people are should be pushing them to your sample pack, and then you retarget them with um, direct mail, Facebook ads, um, what else, email marketing, pushing them back to this store where you'd push them back to like your protein or your, your shirts and stuff like that. So we've got a nice little online store, we've got our product categories. So these are our product category images. Um, so you've got like protein, your clothes, your gear. So people can choose the category they look at. You've also got a drop down here, the menu that takes them to where they need to go. And then these are our featured image, uh, featured products. Um, and you can you can choose whichever shop widgets you'd like to be on your homepage. Completely up to you. Um, but yeah, you have a lot you have a lot of say as to how the website will look. Um, so if we go, let's go and check out the chocolate protein. So we have it here, we've got our chocolate protein, got the product image. This is our sales copy that we posted in the actual page itself. But as you can see, got a nice professional looking online store. And then we can add that to the shopping cart and it tells us how much stock we have in the, um, how much stock we have available. Perfect, and we add it to cart, go view cart. And it takes us to our shopping cart where we can add more quantity. We can subtract it. We can update. If you have, if you've created coupon codes, you can create the coupon codes and apply it there. Um, and as you can see here, we've got our flat rate of seven dollars. And if we add another product, it's going to increase. I think we said a base price of seven dollars plus three dollars for each additional product that we add. But because we went over sixty dollars, it also gives us the option for free shipping. So you can go and they can save money by getting people to buy more protein um, with free shipping. So flat rate and, you, and the more you add, it's just going to keep adding $4 to the total. Let's say we go to one, let's go back to one, update. But let's say we go to calculate shipping state of Queensland because we live in um, Brisbane, update. It's actually cheaper for shipping because it's cheaper to ship within the city that you your business is based in, but it also offers local pickup. So people can come into your store and they can they can order it online and come and pick it up from you. Um, perfect. So you got the local pickup, flat rate, got the shipping in Queensland. You can change it. And then if you go to 4180, so that's just outside the Brisbane city limits that we set. Of course, you'd have to check this and it takes away the local pickup and offers the full price because it's more expensive. But of course, you'd have to check this with whoever is your shipping fulfillment company. Um, that information I found when working with clients is hard to find. So it might just be some trial and error. Sometimes you might not get it right. But just check with your payment, uh, your shipping provider and see if you can find out um, what they classify as the city limits because most of them will offer a discounted rate when you ship within the same city because uh, <clears throat> it's easier for them. But yeah, we did it. We built an online store selling protein within 30 minutes. Um, so yeah, if, you, if there's another product you'd like to see me build, an online store just like the one we built today within 30 minutes, make sure you comment it down below. Um, I'm always looking for inspiration for new stores to build out. Um, and if you would like me to build an online store just like the one I built today, uh, head to okryan.blog slash go. Uh, 
there's more information as to how you can qualify for a free uh, free online store designed by myself um, if you, and also free WordPress hosting. And I'll help you set the entire thing up, help you get your, your e-commerce business up and running uh, instead of paying all these different people, all these different fees. You just pay one set fee because my goal is to make e-commerce simple and I like to bundle e-commerce uh, prices so you can save, get more value and uh, get started faster than ever. So thank you for watching today's video and I look forward to seeing you next time.